guys, it's Maggie, and I'm back for another video. Um, I want to, before we get into our video, I wanted to share my vlog channel again. So I made a vlog channel years ago, and I haven't really done anything with it, but I've started posting on it, and it's kind of another place for you guys to see me. I know some of you are like, hey, make more videos, but it's hard because I work a lot. Um, so it kind of helps when I can just pick up any camera and vlog and make it very informal. Um, so that's how I'm making more videos and you can see Zach and I and how we live our lives. So if you want to check that out, my name is Maggie Mo, and I will put links in the description. Okay, so today we're going to talk about a touchy subject for me um, and I've talked about it in the past. So we're going to talk about disordered eating, which I'm naming the video that to try and not have that stigma of eating disorder, which is terrible because eating disorders are an illness in themselves, and um, I just want to separate what we are talking about from the eating disorders that everybody thinks of. So I'll give you a quick background. Like I said, I've done videos on this before, and I've talked about my past with eating disorders. Um, when I was first diagnosed with Crohn's, I was obstructed, but nobody realized it. Um, I never went to the bathroom, or if I did, it was like maybe once a month. Um, and it was because of a structure that I still have to this day. Um, but I was unable to eat, and I lost a lot of weight. I must have been around 12 years old when I was getting this obstruction that wasn't recognized when it should have been. I wasn't eating because I couldn't eat, I couldn't pack anything in, and every time I went to my GI doctor, I was told to eat more calories. Just eat more calories, eat more calories, stuff them in, add calorie powder, eat this, eat that, and um, I couldn't. I just couldn't do it because I was becoming so backed up, it got to the point where I backed up to my esophagus. And it was probably, for my mental health, the worst time of my life because I had people, I had my GI doctor who knew I had Crohn's disease telling me that she thought I was anorexic, um, like anorexia nervosa. Uh, she wanted me to see a psychiatrist to work through my problems of n not wanting to gain weight. And I'll tell you now, um, I wanted to gain weight in the worst way, but I started to think that I was crazy and like maybe maybe I do think I'm fat and I just like I'm not recognizing it. Um, my dad didn't understand what was going on because he didn't know I was obstructed either. So he was getting angry with me for not finishing my dinner and I would just sit at the table for hours not eating anything because I literally couldn't, but I I was too young to and, and and not educated enough to understand what was happening, to explain it to other people. So for a few months, I was hiding food. Um, I would stuff it in the napkins, stuff it under chairs, stuff it under couches, because I didn't know what else to do. Um, I literally, like, I couldn't eat, but everybody was yelling at me to eat. So eventually my dad found it one night and like he got really angry with me thinking that I was doing like he I guess he thought that I was anorexic too um, which looking at it not knowing how Crohn's works with the strictures nobody educating you on it what else are you supposed to think um, Crohn's makes you not feel good and it makes you not be able to eat it it feels awful but unfortunately people fail to recognize that so long story short I wound up becoming completely obstructed, wound up in the ER with contraction-like pains, um, met my amazing surgeon who I now like get to see him at work because I work at the hospital I was a patient at, and um, he's the one who sa literally saved my life. He found the structure in my rectum, he dilated it, and within hours of that surgery I was ordering room service and I had eaten like I had never eaten before. I was eating multiple meals and shoving food in my face and finally the world was like, hey, she's not anorexic. She was in pain and couldn't eat. She couldn't eat. So I see this a lot. I see eating disorders and I'm not, I am not at all downing eating disorders at all. I'm not putting them down. I'm not saying, oh, they're not serious because they are. They are their own illness. I think that there are eating disorders for what Crohn's people go through. 
Um, but they, it, it is not the same as anorexia nervosa, bulimia, it is different because the causes are different. Um, with those other eating disorders that, you know, come to mind, they are people not perceiving things the way that the rest of the world perceives them or, you know, actually is. Um, whether it be think that you are overweight and need to lose weight even if you are completely healthy, um, that is separate from what the eating disorders that Crohn's and ulcerative colitis people could be classified as or other people with chronic illnesses. I think that I had an eating disorder but I don't think I had what people were trying to tell me I had. So there is something called avoidant or restrictive food intake disorder and it's basically um, the food that the person is eating, there is something about it that makes them not want it. Whether it be some sort of, um, you know, the texture of it or the taste of it. You know, little kids don't like to eat broccoli because it doesn't taste good to them. It's not quite like that. It's a little bit um, more hardcore. But in a Crohn's or ulcerative colitis person's case, food is associated with something negative and that negative thing being pain or, um, you know, nausea or whatever. And that's what I was having. Every time that I ate, I felt pain and I felt nausea and I felt like it was just, I was going to throw it all up, which a lot of the time when I did force myself to eat, I would throw it back up. Not because I was trying to get rid of it, but because my body physically could not push it through any further. My stomach was like, nope. That's what happens when you get obstructed. There is very limited education about this disorder compared to um, other eating disorders. And unfortunately, they wind up being all grouped together. Um, eating disorders like anorexia and bulimia are treated by very strict methods. <laughs> and, um, and they group in the restrictive eaters with that because people just don't understand why they're not eating. And it's hard to explain to a healthy person that, okay, you see, you see me as thin and you want me to eat, but when I eat, I feel pain. You don't feel that pain when you eat, so you're not going to understand it. But every time I eat, it burns and it feels like acid is boiling my stomach and I feel like I'm going to throw up. That is why I'm restricting my eating. I am completely self-aware of my size, my weight, and all of that. You telling me to eat more is <laughs> it's not going to make a difference. Like, I understand physically where I am and I want to eat, but I'm not going to because it causes pain. Which, obviously, not eating is not a healthy thing. But the treatment should not be totally focused on the mental side of, like, Let's work through why you're not eating. I think that's an important aspect because there are points where, you know, even when I got better, even when I was physically fixed, I was like, eh, I don't know if I want to eat that because you know what? Three months ago, that made me vomit. Um, there's definitely that mental component where you need to work through um, once you're physically better, working through, okay, it's okay to eat again. But the part that is often left out is the physical aspect. You need to be feeling better for you to be able to eat and that's and that's where people forget. So the point of this video is for those people out there who have IBD or another chronic illness in general, um, for you not to feel alone because a lot of people are going through this. They are being told that they are crazy when they're not, they're not crazy. Um, when you feel pain and your body is so used to associating pain or whatever other symptom with food, it is 100% natural and 100% right of you to be afraid of food. It's like any learned behavior. If I take this hammer and I hammer my hand and it causes pain, you know what? I'm going to be afraid of hammering my hand again. Like, that's just how the body works. And it's completely normal. But, um... The other half of this video's point is education. So when you're in the hospital and your team is telling you this, make sure you educate them. Do your research on, you know, 
what is going on with you. Tell them how you are physically feeling as well. Tell them, you know what, I know you want me to gain 10 pounds, but this, this food you are putting in front of me makes me vomit, makes me in pain. So we need to find out how to fix that first before I start gaining weight again or start eating. Um, I, I think I've struggled for this the entire diagnosis. I've been diagnosed with Crohn's for 12 years now, I think 13 actually. And I think that I will always struggle with eating um, my whole life. And I struggle today. So I don't want you guys to feel alone. And remember that educating your doctors and nurses don't think that they know everything because they don't and you helping them is a huge step in helping yourself. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you're not feeling alone in this. So I am here to support you. I know what you're going through. Um, so feel free to comment below or, or contact me. All right, I will see you in my next video. Bye.